Friends, welcome to the homestead. Sometimes you have to modify your plans, and I've talked about this before. I've got a little tree surgery that I need to do today, and it just popped up out of nowhere. So to save these trees, I really need to get on it and forget the rest of the stuff that I was going to do today. So come on with us to the other property, as I call it, where our original fruit trees were planted. There's still some that have survived over there, and we need to take care of them right now. Let's go. So I need to load up my tools before we head over there. Let me show you what I got to perform the surgery. And that is a pair of my pruning shears. I've got some loppers and I've got our medicines, our copper and our vinegar. And also always have some alcohol and some rags to wipe off your pruning shears and keep them clean if you're working between different trees. Fruit trees are so sensitive if you're trying to raise them organically and you're not spraying them with pesticides and fungicides all the time. And uh, it's a constant battle to try and keep things off like canker and blight and wilt and all of these other things, brown rot, whatever attacks your trees, it's a real challenge. And you've got to stay on it and you've got to be flexible on your work schedule to be able to do that all the time because it really does creep up out of nowhere. Hey Duke, what you doing? What you doing? Oh, you want me to pet you? I'm holding the camera. So I made it into the orchard and in front of me is one of our beautiful pear trees, but it's not looking so beautiful right now. It's got fire blight and I have to get it off here because it's already affecting some of the pears. Let's see if I can find a pear that's been damaged. Oh yeah, right up there. If you can see those, I'll zoom in. There's some pears up there that are completely destroyed by this fire blight. And here are some right here as well that are a little bit easier to see. That fire blight comes down, it not only destroys the limbs and the leaves, it takes out the fruit. So what I need to do is get in here and remove all of the affected leaves and branches and everything. And in between each branch, I'm actually going to sterilize my pruners or my loppers because I don't want to transfer it to another branch. And it's just a good practice to always be cleaning your uh, pruning material, uh, pruning equipment, and to not let that disease spread throughout the tree. And especially if you are going to be going over to another tree and doing any sort of pruning on that as well. So I'm super lucky that it looks like I'm gonna have a second fruit set on these. You can see right up there at the top, oh, if my finger's not too blurry, right up there at the top, I've got more pears forming and we've got some pears down here that are already golf ball size. So like I said, you have to shift gears and get out here and get it done really quickly because this stuff will spread very fast. I'm in the interior of the tree and you need to get in here to look to see if there's anything up close and in the center of the tree as well. So I've got my alcohol in a alcohol soaked rag with me, my pruners, and I need to get everything out of here. Once I get it out of here, I'm gonna put it in my pull cart back there and take it as far away from here as possible. I'm actually gonna take it over to my burn pile and torch it because that's the best way to take care of diseased stuff on your homestead. You don't wanna compost it. You don't wanna just throw it on the ground next to the tree because the disease will come right back again. So I can see here that this is halfway destroyed, but I need to take off the entire thing. Get back as far as you can on these because it will spread fairly quickly. And then when you're taking them out of the tree, don't touch any of the good leaves and um, branches because you can transfer it really easily. It's really tough to do that sometimes, but you need to be careful when doing it. We're gonna wipe off and continue to go throughout the tree. You can see some pears were really affected here when they were young and just developing and this whole thing has got to get out of here. So that branch I just clipped out was actually touching the branch below it and it transferred onto the branch below it. So that's got to come out too. Now you can see the end of this branch here has fire blight on it and it is creeping down. I don't know if you can see that. It's starting to creep down the branch itself. So even though these leaves look great here, I'm going to cut back all the way over here to try and head it off at the pass, essentially. 
So this big branch here might have looked healthy, but it had a little bit of disease on it. And that disease will spread very fast if you don't get rid of it. And this is actually an object lesson from the Bible. And God's second book is nature. He created this. So he's giving us lessons out here to be able to apply them to our own lives. The lesson in this is that you might see a little bit of rot or a little bit of disease, but it will spread if you do not prune out a lot of it and prune it out quickly. So that's like sin in our hearts. If we don't prune that out of there and get rid of it quickly, it will grow and potentially kill the entire tree. Actually, not potentially, it will kill the entire tree eventually. So it might be painful to actually prune a big chunk of your tree because you've let this beautiful big tree grow and it's giving you some fruit, but some fruit's dying. And if you don't prune it back a lot, then you're gonna lose the tree. So this is just like getting sin out of our lives, right? You don't wanna prune things out of your life. You don't wanna prune sin out of your life because let's be honest, we like our little sins, right? But if you don't prune out the little things now, get rid of them and maybe take a big branch out that's going to be painful and going to be hard to do, then it's just gonna manifest there and eventually kill us. This is a good example of what I was just talking about. You've got blight here, you've got some good pears right there. The blight comes back all the way on this big branch and you can see it's just starting to get on those leaves there. I'm going to have to prune that beautiful branch that's producing fruit all the way back in there. And if I don't, it's gonna cause a big issue on my tree. So even though it's painful, out come the loppers. Now, like I said, it was really hard to keep that from touching the other branches. I'm gonna have to be vigilant on what that touched and hopefully it didn't spread. To be honest, looks like the branch above it is just as bad. Lots of dead fruit on this branch. And remember, blight will attack other palm fruits like apples as well. Now look at this, we've got new fruit set here, but it's got blight on it already. So we need to get it out of there. Even though it's painful to do so, you have to do it for the overall health of the tree. Now that I've got all the blight that I can see pruned out of the tree, I need to hit it with something else because there is certainly stuff that I cannot see. And that blight is on that bark and around those areas where I pruned off. So I need to kill that somehow. A copper sulfate solution is a great organic way to do that. And I have used this for years and it works pretty well. But a friend of mine uses a vinegar solution and he's had really good success with it. And I was just over his house the other day and his fruit trees look beautiful. So I might hit the other trees with this. So for the copper sulfate, I believe the instructions are one ounce per gallon. That's what I've done for years. And for the vinegar, that's a little bit different. I have just the white distilled vinegar from the grocery store and I mixed it at about one quart to one gallon. So an additional gallon. So there's five quarts in here. And I'm just gonna hose down the entire tree, but I'm gonna do something else that I haven't seen anybody else do that just makes logical sense to me. And I'll do that in a second. You wanna get the bark on the tree as well as the leaves and as high as you can get. So adjust your nozzle to get up there. So the last thing that I'm going to do is actually spray the ground with the copper around the tree. And I've never seen that done before. Maybe people do it, maybe they don't, I'm not sure. But the reason I'm doing that, and it's just logical to me, is that a lot of those blighted leaves fell on the ground. And a lot of those blighted pears that shriveled up and were completely black fell on the ground. I've picked them all up but I know that bacteria is now sitting on the ground around the tree. So I wanna to try to control that the best that I can. I'm just gonna do it lightly and hope that that controls everything in this area. Now, unfortunately, in that short amount of time that I noticed the blight, which was just the other day, and I had been out here a week ago, in about a week, I lost half the pears off that tree. So that gives you an idea of how fast this can happen. I don't see any blight on this pear tree, which is very fortunate, but I am going to treat it with the vinegar, just in case. 
If our videos were helpful and informative for you and your family on your homesteading journey, please like the video and share it with your friends. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how and when to pick pears. Have a beautiful, blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.